this is something that we're um, working on now, and that is diving into our data. We're, we're doing a really in-depth data analysis, mm -hmm. and what we'd like to do is have data-driven operations. So to your point, how many times we get called for shots fired, and what is the result of that? So we're spending a lot of money in, in technology, uh, investments in technology to uh, basically create these, um, these forms so we can capture all this data accurately and be able to answer that for you when you do ask. Um, the number of shootings are actually lower than that number. That, mm -hmm. is, that is for sure, of mm -hmm. course. Um, when you start talking about the, the gangs themselves and, and what are their numbers, it's interesting because gang memberships, they do not recognize political boundaries, city limits. Um, they come from all different areas. Now we have a big influence from New Jersey and New York, but it also, uh, there's a lot of people who commit crime in Scranton who do not belong to Scranton, they're not residents, and vice versa. So you start to see that this is um, an area problem. It's a larger community problem. You've seen the problems in the, in the smaller boroughs as well. Unfortunately, um, what drives kids especially, but even older adults, they start young, and these criminal enterprises is what they are, they uh, have older adults in them as well, and they tend to perpetuate. Why somebody would get involved in the first place is beyond us. We do not know that. And the point I'd like to make clear is that so much of this gets put on the police department's plate to handle. We are law enforcement, okay? So, but we are also, we're well aware of the problems and we're eager to help, eager to help in any fashion. Case in point, uh, we are first, right now, trying to um, get off the ground our first long-term crime prevention strategy. And that comes with the, the um, landscape analysis for health and safety in, in the city that we're doing with Mufflehunt. We need to partner with the community. These are community problems, and we're gonna be part of that solution, but we are not the solution. So I will tell you that the Scranton Police Department combats crime daily. We deal with gang members daily, but these are a subset of our own community. It's, it's not, um, you know, many times, the media especially is misleading. Uh, gangs are here, what now? We're not being invaded. These are our own citizens who pick a, um, a lifestyle that is not compatible with our laws and our, and our community. And that's where we come in to enforce the law. We do not win over gangs. That it's an infinite game. It's a strategy. It's how do we minimize that? And those are the methods that we're looking at now. Okay. Um, I, I know you may not want to name gangs. You don't want to give any more credit than what's been happening. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of the number of different gangs um, that are within the city? And if you don't... Well, I, I will tell you this, is that um, you have your larger national gangs that everybody's aware of. In the city of Scranton, you have homegrown neighborhood gangs, but we tend, especially in the media, to make them out to be uh, something that they are not. Uh, many times you will see these members switching teams, if you will. Uh, their loyalties change greatly, maybe because of business, maybe because of geography, I don't know. But the, the loyalty and the, uh, uh, the steadfast uh, dedication to crime we don't really don't see all that often. Okay, um, that's why I was going to ask: Are they like connected to larger cities, or, or uh, as we were calling them, franchises? You know, you have your own Mc yes. you know, McDonald's franchise anywhere that someone else starts, just carries the same name. That is exactly what happens. I, there is, I mentioned the influence from New York and New Jersey, big Philadelphia. 
Um, there's a recruiting effort that goes on trying to get younger kids who are vulnerable to join these organizations. Unfortunately, many times that occurs. Uh, you know, back to that uh, holistic community approach for prevention. We're really looking at that next generation. That's where we start. And we um, do the best with crime prevention that we can. Um, and we've been very successful at it, mind you. We have uh, units within the police department that are constantly on the look for uh, gang activity related with violence. And we've been very successful over the years. Uh, and we get a lot of um, support. Uh, they get a lot of support from other agencies, our law enforcement partners. It has never been better. Um, a tragedy like this causes great concern, especially for the police officers and the community. But what I will tell you is that in times like this, you know, Detective Gil Martin leading the charge, it strengthens our resolve. This only makes us stronger. And we're after all of these criminal organizations. Street crimes alone last year removed 43 illegal guns off the street. That's 43 times we prevented gun violence. That's with known guns. All of our efforts, patrol, detectives, um, with our partners, we interrupt crime and violence on a daily basis. It is hard to quantify that when it comes to public safety. If nothing happens, you don't hear about it. Right. It's only when something happens that you do hear about it. Right. Um, oh, I know in 2020, there was that was Operation Grabbing Straws, which, mm -hmm. which addressed those straw gun purchases and in putting them, you know, having them in the hands of uh, gang members. And then in 2022, the DA, along with you guys, we did, there was a press conference about getting funding. Correct. To help with this. Is that kind of where we're still moving forward with, with these operations, with this funding to continue to try and wrap them up before they start to grow? Every investigation that we do, especially with our partners, we are sharing intelligence. And you, you must remember that the, uh, the, the Scranton Police Department is the, the largest city here. And we are uh, providing as much information to our partners and vice versa. We work, um, we have strengthened our relationships with our other agencies and um, it has grown. We've increased our participation as well. And I think that this is why we were so successful last week. A terrible tragedy occurs and within minutes we have a lot of resources available to us from federal agencies, multiple state agencies, our neighbors, um, but there are the boroughs and the, the county and the Pennsylvania State Police, just outstanding. But that doesn't occur cold, uh, in a cold call. We have already had these um, relationships established and we're doing great work on the road. Unfortunately, um, Calgary Martin gets wounded. Um, it's, it's dangerous work. And I, I want to point out that in this event, they're preventing another shooting from happening. That's what we do. That's the, that's the honor, it's the nobility of this job to place ourselves in harm's way for others, people we don't even know. And the dedication of our officers is remarkable. And how they conduct themselves, especially that night, is great. We bring a lot of attention to it because of that night. But it's constant. And this event, how tragic, strengthens our resolve. Scranton Police Department is committed to the public safety of Scranton, and we are strong, and we will continue to do our job to keep gangs at bay, to keep the violence down, but we have a police department that we can be proud of. Um, you guys went hard and fast in trying to round mm -hmm. up as many people that could be involved that may have knowledge. Um, can you at least say how successful or beneficial it's been, may not just, maybe not just in this instance, but in other, you know, 
instances, you know, shootings, break-ins, et cetera, that may have ties to gang-related activity? Anything that may have gang-related activity, we follow up on, always. With um, recently, we were able to exploit that uh, capability with uh, the extra resources that we're here to, to assist. We're sending that message. I think it was made very clear in the, in the um, previous press conference that we're not dealing with this. And um, there's a message to be sent that this is not the place for your, uh, your violence. We don't want it. And it happened to occur in Scranton. It could occur in any community. And if, regardless, we will be there for them as well. This is a unified front by all in law enforcement. And you see now that the community, city of Scranton, has been fantastic. Um, we haven't seen this, this much support in a long time. And it's nice to hear the silent majority with a voice and their full support, and that strengthens us and our resolve, and um, I would like to capitalize on that. And I encourage anybody with information on any crime, any violence, any suspected gang members to contact us. They could do it on our website um, th where they can see to send it anonymous or they can have a conversation with an officer and get that information out. Information, knowledge is power, and it might not be what we can use at the moment, but it's a piece of the puzzle for something down the road. It all is pertinent. Uh, finally, Kyle specifically has been on this, this gang unit within the Scranton Police Department um, and awarded for his, his work and his efforts. I, it's my understanding that like he's, he was doing what he wanted, wanted to do. He was trying to cut down this violence. What kind of um, officer is he to this department? Calgon Martin is a true leader. He believes. You know, the, the governor talked about um, law enforcement being the noble profession. It's true. Um, we believe that we can make a difference. Uh, we are very fortunate in our own lives to be able to do so. Uh, we're very fortunate to be have uh, employed with the city of Scranton and have the capabilities to intervene. He's got a very large heart. He's been a leader in uh, crime suppression, first with street crimes, uh, then he is uh, with major crimes unit, and uh, also with the uh, auto theft task force. And fittingly, um, he is hanging in there strong right now. We're very proud of him and his family, and uh, we will make him proud. Um, can we connect this shooting, shots fired incidences, to any other recent events um, officially on the record? I know there was a stabbing slash shooting <clears throat> up at, near Penn State Scranton, some break-ins um, in the Green Ridge area. Can, can we connect those incidences? I know that um, the house on Harrison Avenue happened to be one of the people involved in the stabbing of Tyler McKenna. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that all of these are all related, connected, because it's maybe retaliation? It would not be appropriate for me to comment on any of that. Okay. Um, but it's similar activity, and that the media has um, connected a couple of people mm -hmm. who may overlap in these investigations. Um, we'll have to wait till the results of the investigations, and I'm sure um, it'll be publicly revealed if it is. Okay. Mike, do you have any questions? How long have you been a police officer total? I've been a police officer for 27 years. Have you seen a change in either recruitment? I know years ago it used to be people from the outside who would come in and try and infiltrate here, but now it feels like it's people who are from here who are trying to form their own. Is Have you seen that, you know, over the years, a change? There's definitely um, a change. It's more prevalent. Um, but it's tough to distinguish between, it's, uh, you know, delinquency or uh, general disorder behavior and um, gang activity, the, the violent crime, the criminal aspect of it. The unfortunate part is that 
we have a, a what, what appears to be youth that are very brazen. There's a huge disrespect for authority across the board, not just the police, uh, teachers, you know, elders, the, the, the society in general. And somehow uh, they find that violence is appealing or that disorder, causing disorder is appealing. We see more of that. We're dealing with that more and more. Um, but what we don't like to see is the youth carrying firearms. We are arresting them very young with loaded firearms. And that is a total breakdown of the uh, family and society structure. And that really needs to come to a stop. Does that make it difficult to um, charge these kids with adult crimes? That may be a question for the DA, but does that, is that a challenge when you've come across somebody, oh gosh, they're 14, they're 15, they're 16. How, how, do you, how do you move forward knowing that they can full well just get a slap on the wrist to be back out doing it the next day? It's very disheartening. Um, our officers, just like they did the other night, they're constantly intervening before a tragedy happens. And when the offender is a juvenile especially, we find that they're back out on house arrest, um, and I don't see much um, consequence for their actions. It's almost empowering. You saw it from the, uh, uh, the person who was walked to a police car the other night in the state police barracks. The last words is that he'll be out. That's what they believe, uh, and many times it's accurate. That really needs, to, needs a better look by the courts as to how long we can keep people. Uh, many crimes we see, especially with juveniles, many of them are wearing house arrest anklets. It doesn't stop them, and I, I think we need a more in-depth look at this. And really, to change the laws, it's got to be the community that says something. The police department is doing an excellent job. We're arresting, we're arresting, we're arresting. We're seeing the same people over and over again, which gets disheartening and obviously evolves into a, a greater threat for society.